one. And um, yeah, we had a, a, a bit of a problem, and Jesus cannot make it for his, their slot. So I am we have decided to take over the slot and found a game called Spoken Magic, which is a card-based narrative game. And apparently our setting includes thunder, because I'm in the middle of a thunderstorm. <laughs> I don't know how much gets picked up by the mic. Um, so yes, uh, we'll introduce ourselves really quickly. I'm Hikaru, I was here earlier. We're, we, we've all been here on the stream, but yes. And um, I also have with me um, these guys. Uh, <laughs> Hi, I'm Fawful. Uh, you may have seen me last night in Hikaru's game. Um, and... I have no idea what I'm getting into, but I've signed up for it, and it's too late now. Uh, Michelle? Michelle, um, I'm part of the Titans Air game, and I signed up for one thing, but I'm here, and I'm still happy to be here and to play. Hey, I'm Pi, and you can't get rid of me. You, you may have seen me on our regularly... I would like to say regularly scheduled games on Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, but I, I don't know when we've been regular on that, I swear to God. But, uh, yeah, I can words, which will be great for this game, and I'm sure there will be no problems. It's called Spoken Magic. We're all great at words here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are all equally great at words. That is to say we are all awful. <laughs> Shh, don't give away the secrets. <laughs> so the basis of this game is you will be creating a sorcerer of some kind. Um, and you will be creating a magic system that your sorcerer uses based off of cards. And then we have cards for location and problems. And then we have to uh, collaborately... See, we we're great at this. Great. This is a great start. <laughs> we have to... Uh, creatively think of solutions to the problem using the magic of our party, basically. Um, so that's that's the short and sweet of what Spoken Magic is about. There are 30 problem cards, so I'm sure we can fill this two, two hour slot just fine. We just have to keep throwing problems at our sorcerers. A two hour slot. Sorry, that's been going in my head forever. <laughs> So we have a how to play here, which is probably on the screen because Pi is probably scrolling up and down it. No. Uh, just, just like me. Uh. <laughs> I, I was definitely not just... Yeah, it was definitely on the screen. <laughs> oh, you popped it out. Chat, um, chat help me here. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I'll start reading and then we can go through it and... So I have one question. This basically has the whole like how we work together and do things. Do we want to go bit by bit and like do the thing, or do we want to read the whole document and then play? Lady, if we, um, don't, if we don't go bit by bit, I may forget by the time we get to the end. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Great. All right. So we'll go for the first part. Um, I'm gonna skip. First, you need your okay. Sh shit. Skip okay. Nothing. I'll read. I will not skip anything. This grimoire will explain to you how to cast magic with your fellow spellcasters and how to use that magic to solve problems as you travel this mystical world. But first, you need your components. You need a name and you need your words. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> We're already running into problems there, aren't we? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Did everybody bring their name? <laughs> name? What name? Um... To prepare for spoken magic, create a handout. We have done that for each of up to four players and change the handout settings to allow players to edit. I did that. Make sure the arcanum words, location, and problem decks are all shown. That is, hopefully, you guys can see that on the sidebar. The little, like, yes. cards. I, I can see the decks. I cannot edit my own handout. Uh, also, congratian to Gazian, who won the giveaway. And uh, we're definitely not going to mug Gazian for any of the things. Definitely not. Uh, Wait, Gazian already won a, a giveaway. I that's think why we might mug them and 
we know where we they live. Reroll or something. I don't know how to do that, which is why I didn't suggest it. Yeah, we also I guess. didn't say anything about you can't re. Okay, I let I let people re-enter. But yes, but if you re-enter, you can re-win. Yeah, but I wasn't thinking about winners. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. It really do feel like that sometimes, don't it? Why, why isn't it showing the Discord chat? I have it above everything. Oh, did it break? I think so. Because it sometimes breaks. Alright, Gaz. I'll let you win. win but we time. know where you live. But you, you live do, on yeah. our server. You live on our server, and I will I will have words with you. Maybe. <laughs> like, I, congrats, I, Ian. Um, all right, so where was I? Oh, Foff, you should be able to edit now. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, thank I you. I forgot to put you in the edit. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Blank one, you don't need to edit it. Uh, <laughs> Once you've gathered and arranged the materials, play begins with each character writing down a sorcerer's name within their handout, leaving room for more information as the game progresses. Yeah, don't fill it out entirely and like leave no space for anything else. Um, just your name. Um, for you can drag the like description and notes thing down, um, but I would save change every once in a while because you might lose everything you've written down. So everyone has to pick a name. That's that's like the hardest thing, even in like video games. Let's create a character. What name? Okay. I I sense someone already has. It. I'm gonna play I... as Hobbesian. <laughs> <laughs> I have a name. It's an inside joke that I'm absolutely certain zero people listening are going to get, but it is an inside joke. Wait, wait, what if we win? What do we win if we get it anyway? Um. Terror? I will donate two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> All right. Chat has Google to... foo. <laughs> All right. So I called mine Ellen Lamal because I am boring, and also used a fantasy name generator. Uh, I'm like, how is that boring? <laughs> All right. Happy. Um, we have a Habit. Hab, hab, can't pronounce that. Hobbs. Uh, we can't actually see the other characters' names. Is this going to be a problem? Yeah. I can edit that. I will edit that in a second. Oh, yeah. I guess I can put mine at the bottom, too. Oh, my God. Why? So, how do you pronounce yours? Uh, Ia Delarue. Nice. All right, so everyone can see the handouts. Yep. Yep. All right, we have a name. Woohoo! First step is done. <laughs> Zappy sounds very cute. Zappy is amazing. Alright, so we have Ia Delarus. Delarue? Delarue. Delarue. Imagine it's French. Yeah. Then I think you're pronouncing French. far too many of the letters. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> Zappy and Ellen. Okay. Then we get to pick our first card. Let me just uh, From shuffle which all of them. Shuffle. Shuffle. And shuffle. Alright. So, select a card at random from the Arcanum deck. 
which will describe your the nature of your magic words. So you can grab a card from the deck and like hover bring it over to your name at the bottom and it will put it into your like hand. Click to drag. Oh, wait. And click to draw, drag to deal. Yeah, so click to draw. Okay, so you just click. Ah! But I want it on my hand. Neh! Did someone just steal mine? I don't know. How do you... Wait! How did Foff get theirs tiny? Uh, cause Foff did oh. it properly. I <laughs> did it properly? I didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> I moused yeah. over it, there was a thing that said draw, I clicked on draw. It told right. me how many cards, and... Now I can't move them. Why can't I move my... Uh, where did yours go? Uh, I think you have to click once more, because Carter stole the one I was using. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think we have to take turns picking it, or else... Because these are, like, somehow physically placed in a certain order. So just click the one that tries to pop up, or click on the left that says draw on Arcanum deck. Okay, it's just there's a, there's, there is a card on my screen and I oh, can't... Oh, you have to drag it to the literal word, like your name, until it's highlighted. I, d I did, but now it's like popped. Does it, will just, yeah. Pop? It's just there. Uh... So that's why it's not by my name for some reason. I can't click and drag it. Right. Uh, is it popped out of the, like... No. No, it's on the screen. It's underspoken for me. Okay, so we don't see it for some reason, uh, yeah. which is hilarious, but right-click on it, and there's an option to pick up the card. Hopefully. Oh. Ideally. Yeah. Nope. Oh. No, that was okay. mine. Uh, oh. I think... I think it glitched. Try... <laughs> try refreshing... The browser because I think something broke. <laughs> we broke it already, guys. Also, chat. Chat, if this doesn't fit me, I don't know what does. Okay, here we I go. Fine. All right, there we go. What? Now it's not broken. Okay, good. Um, all right, so then you should be able to grab another blue card and. Hey, there we go. Excellent. So, I feel called out by mine. Um, Do we want to read ours out, or does that come later? Let's see. So this describes to you the nature of your magic words. Uh, once this has been done, share your names and decide who goes first by the most arcane means at your disposal. I'm guessing that's a dice roll. On your turn, ask each other... Okay, yeah, so let's, um, let's just go in order at the bottom. So, Michelle, you go first. Okay. I am. What am I? I'm sharing my name. Your name and how what how the the contents of your card. Like, what's your magic? Okay, I'm Zappy, and it says um, your words are stolen. Ooh. Okay. So my name is Ellen Lamal, and my words are formed from nothingness. <laughs> Well, isn't that how words work? Okay. <laughs> I, I'm playing Hobbesian, and my words are profane. <laughs> I feel called out. <laughs> <laughs> I am playing Ia, and my words are restorative. We have a healer! Okay. All right, shall we keep that order, like the one at the bottom, and just continue that way? Is that going to be our arcane means of deciding who goes first? I mean, seems reasonable to me. All right, cool. Um, so that means Michelle gets to go first. Um, on your turn, ask each other player to tell you one thing about their character. You may let them tell you something of their choosing, 
or you may ask specific questions such as where did you learn your magic, etc. Et Once your turn is complete, the next player does the same until all players have taken a turn. So this will basically mean that everyone is going to learn three things about their sorcerer. Uh, um, also notably, <laughs> when you tell another player something about your character, write that down. Yeah, that's what the index card, well, handout is for. Um, to keep track of what you've decided about your character. So you don't lie about your character already. <laughs> okay, so I asked the question. Yeah, so you go first. You can ask a question. Um, of Ellen? Of uh, each of us. I'm assuming it's the same question and we each have to answer it. I don't think so. And yeah, if you don't have a specific question in mind, you can just say, like, tell me something about your character, and then we have to figure out something about the character. So this is the, like, it, this is the first improv heavy place where we will all flail around figuring shit out about these characters that we know nothing about. We. Uh, let's see. Ellen. Um... Did you study magic, or does it come naturally? Uh, I think it, this is a natural magic. It just happens. From, I have no idea how this works. It just happens, and there is magic. Same question to both of you. So Hobbesian, is your magic natural or did you study? Uh, I have natural talent, but I have studied since then and only gotten stronger. All right. Um, law? Yeah, but um, I studied from the get-go. Everything came through hard work, effort, and uh, maybe a good teacher or two along the way. All oh, right, I was gonna yell at Zio to help me because it's eight o'clock and the cat's like, "Where's my food?" What a good boy. Hopefully right, I will not forget to uh, unmute myself as I mute myself every time I type. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, yeah. Okay. I had ideas, and now it's my turn. You had ideas, yes. And then I had... Oh my god. That just gave me the best idea. Alright. Um, Zappy, um, do you have some kind of, like, Familiar or animal companion? I have. Um, she's tiny and a little shy. Um, I call her Bess. What cut cut out was what it is. What kind of animal? A small bird. A small bird, okay. Yeah, you just got cut out just as you said what it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, Her cool. Um, what about uh, Hob Hob Hobbesian? <laughs> uh, do I have a familiar? Mm -hmm. Or some kind of animal companion? Uh, I tried to summon a familiar and I only sometimes get their help. It may be because I screw with them too much and they don't <laughs> always like me the, the best but they are a, uh, a hang on words wait no there was a nocturnal uh Screw it, there aren't any more. 
is a large hedgehog. Amazing. I love it. What about uh, you? Uh, I I used to have a familiar. Was, uh, he was a miniaturized red dragon. But um, unfortunately, we've since parted ways. And last I heard, he was removed from reality. So I doubt I'll be able to see him again. Interesting. All right. Hi. All right. Oh no, that's a, that is a dumb question. So I looked up on the internet, fun, weird, and unexpected interview questions to see if I could get some help with this. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm going to pass over why are manholes round and what do you think of garden gnomes? <laughs> but I do like this one. So I, I'm going to ask you. You have been given a beholder. You can't give it away. You can't sell it. What do you do with it? Zappy. Is this a uh, beholder of usual size? Or is it usual, smaller? Usual, maybe a little bit smaller. And a traditional beholder with the anti-magic cone yes. and all the stocks? Okay. Um, I can't... So I can't give it away. And you can't sell it. I can't sell it. Well, I will have the beholder look after my family's sheep. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Ellen, <laughs> what would you do with a, a gift of a beholder that you cannot sell or give away. Um, well, clearly I would transform them into something more like maybe like a black cat that I could take with me on adventures and morph back into its normal form if I ever needed more help. That would be the crotchetiest cat. <laughs> yeah. I, uh... If I was given a beholder... I... Would... Teach it some tricks, and then... Set it to... Guard my prized possessions. Whatever those may be. <laughs> I'll probably change from time to time. Ah. <laughs> Alright, so Foth, you get to ask us questions now. I do. Um, so, a question I have for all of you is <laughs> was something and then I completely forgot it. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> isn't isn't that isn't that the life? <laughs> yep. That is certainly the life. Um tell me about your family. Do any of them also know magic? What did they treat you like after they found out? Do they know that you're a, a sorcerer of some variety? Um, I'm zappy, so I'll go, oh, okay, go first. Well, at first they didn't until the beholder showed up. And then after I was able to convince the beholder to be a very good um, member of the staff, uh, then the truth came out. I like right. how we now have three beholders in the party. Thanks. 
I said, if you got one. <laughs> yeah, but we're creating the characters here, so apparently we did now. <laughs> we did. Look, the sheep are real safe. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, family. Well. Oh. All right. You go for it. Wait, you just spent <laughs> your turn bitching at me. <laughs> Uh, no, um, I, I like this idea. Um, so everything, I, I, I didn't even know I had magic until a beholder showed up and somehow got transformed <laughs> into that. So, that weirded out everyone else and they were like, get that cat out of here. And I'm like, but the cat doesn't want to leave because the cat wants to be a beholder again. <laughs> For some reason. For some reason. So, um, yeah, I'm a bit ostracized from my family, and I'm traveling with this cat, and maybe at some point I'll figure out how to use my magic to transform it back. <laughs> and maybe it will kill me at that point. Cool. <laughs> Beautiful. I think that means that we're done here, right? We can start hey, wait a minute. drawing words. Hup, hup. Well, perhaps Ian. Hobbs Ian has to go. Oh. Right, right. <laughs> no one loves I... Hobbsy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, yes, Hobbsy went. Wait, no, that that was literally just to say Ellen hasn't gone yet. <laughs> Never That's mind. Right. <laughs> so, uh, Hobbsy's original family was was very poor. So, I, I was sold to a traveling merchant for a, a great sum of money because I would be of use to them with a uh, small amount of magical talent. But I got into a fight with several of their horses and then they gave me away for free to the next innkeeper and I was very cute so they kept me and uh Turns out you shouldn't bite the patrons. And now I'm traveling. All things are going according to plan. I don't know whose plan it is. Amazing. Alright, we are now all powerful conduits of magic. But we need to give that energy shape. So we need words. So in order, so we don't have issues like last time. From the words deck, you will draw six cards. I did shuffle all of the decks, so uh, Michelle, you can go ahead and grab six cards from the words deck. Words deck. Draw, and I'm drawing six cards. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. All right, so I will... Oh, yeah, that's the problem. I'm the DM, so I can't draw. I can just deal. All right, so I will deal six cards to my hand. Excellent. I am done. Go for it, Pi. <clears throat> From the words deck? Yes. Blorp. Okay. <laughs> and pop. All right. Yeah, so de technically I could just deal cards out to you guys, but I think it's more fun if each person draws. So we draw the six cards and decide based on their arcanum, okay, uh, the, the first card we got, and their deep magical knowledge, what each word means. Oh. What? So we got a bunch of, like, words, right? Uh-huh. And they all are, you know random words that can kind of be said aloud and not don't have any meaning so you oh, all get to decide I didn't what see what they looked like yeah they're pretty cool because they've got the like uh, symbols under them and all that that is really neat and um, we each have to decide what those six words mean Ooh. linked to the um, the source of our magic. source or nature of our power. Yeah. 
Okay. So. This is hard. My words are formed from nothingness. <laughs> Conjuration question mark? That's true. Summoning, maybe? It's so broad, I guess. And at the same time, nothing. Uh, so, how many of you have words that you can pronounce? I guess oh. they're technically all pronounceable. Mm -hmm. It just depends on how you want to say them. Yeah. And since these are your words, you get to decide what... <laughs> how to say them. There, There is only one that I'm kind of, like, confused on how they're intended to be pronounced. Yeah, but... same here. But at the same time, like, these are your words, so you decide. True. There is no, like, there is, this game doesn't come with a how to pronounce these words, because you get to decide. You, these are your magic words now. You make the rules. <clears throat> what do you mean I can't center the text? Wait, there we are. Thank God. No! Not you. You. I hate everything. I'm definitely not trying to stylize mine so it looks nicer. I just made a table. I did too, but then I had to put a header on the table, and then the header wasn't centered, and then the header wasn't big enough. Life is difficult. I'm using the tried and true method of staring at the word and trying to see what's the first concept that comes into my head. Uh, the other thing is, if you have no idea, I'm basing it off of the symbols and do they look like anything? Mm. Like I've got that... one that could look either like a wave or a, a flame. Mm -hmm. And then one that looks a little bit like a person. So, I don't know how I'm going to put those together, but at least that's a starting point if I've got no other clue. I'm going very simple with my word stick and actually make choosing one word. <laughs> it's okay. One of the little symbols on my cards kind of looks like a topless person with a skirt dancing. <laughs> and it says what each word means, so it could be either one word or it could be a short description of what it means if it were like not like a true translation. Yeah. Like one of those things where in German it's like some really long word and it's a full paragraph in English. Yeah. I'm done. Bastard. <laughs> The, the true magic is being able to do this that fast. <laughs> well, welcome to Midgardio, where Karu is one of our main GMs, so they probably improv more than the rest of us. <laughs> I also have a small cheat in which I could, like, I can not, I, I not only can compare, like, what the words I got with, like, possible English words, but also Spanish. <laughs> yeah, so I'm doing two... that with French and I'm still not done yet. <laughs> I have two languages to pull from. I'm so glad that Zio managed to feed the cat. He is so chill now. Yes, I made sure to feed my cat before I started. 
I did I said not. You were, I said you were chill cat. Shut up. <laughs> Welcome to ASMR with Earl. Cat activity. <laughs> uh... Now, don't wipe my nose. <laughs> you can purr into the mic, but don't rub it. That is loud. Hey, no, don't bite my nose. Hey! <laughs> that was not one of those things you said you couldn't do. <laughs> Loopholes. <laughs> Just for the record, you didn't say he couldn't do that. He has this habit of when he's like being really cuddly and stuff and just like up against my face and then he will just nibble at my nose like it's it's not a bite it's more of like a I want to grab your nose kind of thing with his teeth and I cannot get him to stop doing that all right I'm done and the main problem is he does that when I'm trying to fall asleep and he's like huddling in my arms uh chat totally didn't notice that I can't spell thievery that's fine This looks a lot messier, but I think it'll be easier for chat to read, so. <laughs> ah, no! It's definitely not easier for chat to read if I pop it out. <laughs> <laughs> My bad! Hey. No. Don't do that. But what if yes? You're just made. Uh... I know what my words mean. Okay. So, are we, uh, Foth, are you done? I'm, it, I'm on my last one. <laughs> sorry. Right. No, it's alright. Um, Let's see here. Uh, since you spoke first, Pi, why don't you do the beginning? I regret! <laughs> <laughs> the beginning. Before the journey can begin, you need a place to journey from. Your home. Draw a card from the location deck. And take turns describing an aspect of this home and why you are leaving. Once you all know your home, you must leave it. Your journey starts with the first turn. So, I guess, uh, Zappy, do you want to draw one card from the location deck? Remember to place it on where it says home on the board. Alright, there's a board! Now let me... Wait, isn't that... Uh, you can just grab it off the card and you should be able to... Yeah, there you go. 
Oh god, that yeah. on light background is horrible. Oh, City of it? the Elves. Okay, uh, so one thing for you guys. If you click on the uh, card and press Z, uh, Z, it will embiggify it so that it makes it easier to read. Embiggin! City, City of the Elves. Uh, City of the Elves. So that's my home. I think that's all of our homes. Yeah, because there's only one spot for home. Yeah, so that is our home. Okay. And now we take turns describing an aspect of this home. Do we want to make a, like, home handout? Yeah. GM, who can That's... make handouts. <laughs> uh, we should probably only have one person edit it, though. So, uh, good job, GM. <laughs> Thanks for volunteering. Alright, we... <laughs> I'll have edit permissions. What I was thinking of is because the thing we have to do now is each of us have to describe an aspect. So eh. we'll take turns describing and then we'll let the person who just described type in their bit okay. while the next one describes and then and make sure we're not overlapping the typing. Um, are we going in the usual order? Was Zappy going first? Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, okay, City of the Elves. Our home is... It's actually, um... Mountainous. And... Life is interesting because... Some of us live higher up in the mountains, some of us live lower. So you know how some... With mountains, like, you have those, like, plateaus and... And how... It, you know, it's flat, and so those areas, of course, are easier to live in. But, um, for example, my character would live up a little bit higher, so life is just kind of interesting. So, okay. so Mount. And so, uh, I'm, I'm imagining so, something like, uh, like Machu Picchu. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. And right. why are you leaving this? And I guess that would go on your character. Let's do yeah. let's do the city like let's do the aspect of the home and then we'll loop back again to why okay. we're leaving. Sounds good. That way there's less to type at the same time. Um okay, so uh describing I, aspect of this home. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting almost ready to to save this. Okay. Alright. Um Okay. Excellent. Alright, so my turn. Describing aspect of this home. All right, so we have a tiered mountain city. Um, I think the tiers are based on, like, ha what is done in the area. So you have, like, a tier that's, like, food and crops. Mm -hmm. And then you have an area that's, like, crafters and all the people that make things. And then you have an area that's just, like, learning and there's, like, libraries and schools mm -hmm. and stuff like that and then you have another area that is um the residential area for those who do not live necessarily anywhere else and then so on and so forth so like each of the tiers has like a very um specific uh theme of like what goes on in that area and you have to go through you have to go to each of the plateaus for different things. And that's my thing. So, hi. Alrighty. So we have a very, I guess, staged city where everything is cleanly laid out. Um, not necessarily planned, but maybe it was built in over time and when, you know, merchants came in, they all took a, a location and decided this was the merchant's quarters. Um, even though it's out of the, possibly out of the way because it's mountainous, uh, the, the City of the Elves is 
very prosperous and busy. A lot of people come through the city either looking to buy or sell or make their living there because there is a place for everyone. Am I up? All right. Um, <clears throat> so we have our mountainous village built upon many, many plateaus and, and built over a long period of time. And the surprising thing about this particular mountain region is that it's coastal. So in particular, it's coastal on both sides. It's just a single strip of land dividing two oceans. And during the spring times, there will be large storms that crash against the eastern edge of the town. During the winters, very cold storms will blow in from the west. And the dichotomy of these two different oceans and how they interact in terms of weather, how they they feel the kind of uh, seafood that you get from from each of them. Uh, you'll have people go down to one side, one ocean at certain times, and it becomes a a vibrant culture based around this dichotomy between the two and the lands on either side as well. Anybody who wants to get through has to go essentially through the village. You have a pretty interesting home. All right, so we loop back to Michelle with why you are leaving. I am leaving I am leaving because I have um siblings uh, we have you know we have a good business um but of course not everyone can inherit um, and it's one of those times where are you getting married? What type of job are you going to have? Are you going to stay on the farm? And I have decided to not stay on the farm. So while my family still accepts me, I have basically my family, I, I since I'm not going to work on the farm, I have made my contribution with the beholder. Um, that is, you know considered good contribution to the family. Um, but I've decided to make my living somewhere else. So that's why I am leaving. Well, I accidentally like kind of sort of answered this earlier, but um, <laughs> my family's not too cool with the whole suddenly magic uh especially since you know i pissed off a beholder and um they want me gone i also kind of you know want to figure out all this thing about the nothingness magic so i figure you know staying home is not going to be a good way to figure out more about magic uh so travel it is hopefully i find a way to befriend the beholder before it turns back into its normal form so it doesn't kill me <laughs> <laughs> um so the city of elves is wonderful and i've seen many other cities before that when i was traveling but i i did stop long enough in the city of elves to call it home but I, I'm leaving now because there were a lot of beholders that suddenly showed up. And for some reason, I didn't get one, and I'm very jealous, and I would like my own beholder. 
So I am leaving to go find my own. I was lower down on on these mountains. Uh almost close enough to to the oceans to to really feel like I was among the fishermen, even though I was technically considered just a resident of the the standard residential areas. Um but there was a particularly bad storm last spring and uh I don't really have a home anymore. So I'm journeying out to to find a new home because no matter the the strength of of my studies, I haven't quite figured out how to restore a broken home yet. The building, not the You get it. I was gonna say that was suddenly <laughs> really sad. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Um, Pi, you were finishing off the beginning. All right. You all know your home now. You must leave it. Your journey starts with the first turn. A turn consists of three components. The location, the problem, and spell casting. You want, you want me to keep going? Uh, well, this is the next thing, to, so we can do. We can skip to Fawful now. Uh, cool. A place to be. On your turn, draw a location card and describe a scene at the place you have journeyed to based on the prompt written on the card. Describe the landscape and its features, any people that might live there, and any other special features. The scene may involve the other characters, and you might may invite their players to join you in describing or enacting this moment. But ultimately, you decide what is and is not included in your scene. Describe the landscape, its features, people who live there. Didn't it just have the sentence? <laughs> Take your time bringing wonder to this description. The lands you travel are quite literally only what you describe. All right, so we're starting with Zappy then. Yep, the, we're following that. So the location. location. Yep, you pick a location, and this time you 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 basically get to do all the deciding for this location, and this is going to be our like first scene. Um, but you can, if you need, uh, ask for help in describing anything. So place the location on the location um, area right below our home and we'll see what happens oh, now, right. I, now I see why it has a prompt below the name Marsh of the Wizards And the prompt is what remains. So, are we together now? Like as a group? Um, or? Yeah, yes, I believe so. I, um, you... I, thi I think it's actually up to you. As it, like, it says may involve the other characters. Right. And that says to me, like, you get to decide. Yeah, because it says, may involve the other characters. You may invite pl their players to join you in describing or enacting. Or enacting. So it's either, you can either uh, choose help with describing and or enacting, like, uh, being participating in this scenario. So each scene, uh, so it's really up to whoever draws the card who participates in the scene. All of us are leaving to either find a new home or for work. And sometimes those things come together. 
And I think we have, we had different choices. And one of the choices was to investigate, become part of a team that investigates perhaps little problems, you know, on the border or something. And we live in mountains and there was that awful storm that happened. And um, down the coast, there was this um, area that um, basically kind of like a estuary almost or, you know, very marshy and wetlands type of area. Um, it was like there was a town and it's not just like it was destroyed. It was just like it's gone. And, and I think that's like where we're going. That's where we are. So it's, there was a city here, but now there yeah. is none. Is is it like mm -hmm. there's there's not even like like the there's the space like the the like missing homes or anything or is it just like now it just looks like wilderness where there once was a city? It's like there's um there's like um like what was built with stone is still there. So you have some, some of the buildings are still there. What was in stone is still there, but like everything else is gone. Okay. Uh, do we want to go down the line then for the next one? I think we have to go through this. Uh, what, what do you mean down the line? For uh, trouble stirs. Oh, because uh, it's basically when you are satisfied with the scene and where your location is, a problem occurs. Yeah. Um. Oh. Yeah. So. So do I? Oh, okay. I pick a problem. Yeah. You. You can. Well, read out trouble stirs first, and then we'll pick a problem and see what happens. Okay. Trouble stirs. Once you are satisfied with your scene, a problem occurs. Draw a problem card and describe the issue in hand based on the prompt written on the card. Discuss who the problem affects and why, and explain why the problem must be solved with magic. Some problems may have additional instructions. If these instructions cannot be followed, the spell automatically fails. Avoid describing problems where the consequences of failure would end the journey. Once the problem is established, you may begin speaking the magic words. So... Draw a card. I think my first piece of feedback for these guys is not using light green on yellow for the location cards. Okay. A wedding. This spell may only be two words long. Okay. Oh, boy. So, um, during our investigating of this place, there comes a sound and a movement under the ground, and we need to come up with a spell that will um, like prevent us from getting sucked into like the dirt, the, the, the ground. That is an interesting use of the idea of wedding. Terrifying too. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. So it's trying to suck us into right. the marsh. Yeah. yeah, the ground is starting to okay. to move <laughs> and um some of us are probably kind of climbing up and and we can some of us are starting to make it but like maybe um 
like my character, like Zappy and someone we're not we're not all going to make it to like the stone. So we need to help each other. Um instead of a party of four becoming a party of like two or three. That's basically <laughs> it. Like I, I wanna I don't want to end the journey. So yeah. I'm gonna say like a couple of you are like you've made it to because I said some of the stone was still there. So we've run, we've gone, we found a stone home and a couple of us are already in there, but I'm gonna say Zappy's in danger. Um so we need to help at least Zappy not get sucked under the dirt. Okay. So this is where the casting spells happens, and I'll read that out. Um, working collectively, select which words you want to commit to the spell, and in what order. No player may commit more than one word to a spell, but at least one word must be committed to each spell. As each player contributes a word, they describe how its meaning will help or hinder the spell. When you have completed writing your spell, the current player recites the words and describes its magic, rolling one six-sided die for each helping word and one four-sided die for each hindering word. If one of the dice rolls a six, the spell is successful and the current player describes how the problem is solved. If none of the dice rolls a six, but one of the four-sided dice shows a four, the spell fails. And one of the sabotaging players, decided by whichever means seems fair, describes how the magic goes awry. One of the sabotaging players also looks at the top card of the problem deck and may place that card on the bottom of the deck or put it back on top. So you get to like peek at the next problem. If no dice show their highest number, the spell is weak and only partially effective. The current descri player describes how the problem is solved, but only partially or temporarily. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. We can't. Uh, we have two words. By the way, once the spell is complete, if two or more words were committed, the current player gifts one of the committed words to another player. All other words committed to the spell are lost. Place them in the discards of the players that wrote their meaning and do not use them in another spell unless directed to do so. The current player then takes the location card into their hand from the board, discards the problem card, and their turn ends. All right, so it's time to cast a spell with two words to save Zappy from being married with the earth. Which, which is bad. Uh, I have absolutely nothing that can help. So, um, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, re you remember how my source of magic is your words are profane? Yeah. A whole lot of these aren't good. <laughs> Great. Because, you know, I went with profane being against, like, religions and what is normally, like, you know, keeping people together. Right. Zappy, I hope you have something good. Um, I have one word that I think I can put forth for this. I think I do, too. But, uh, since it'll be up to Zappy to cast it and, like, say how it works mm -hmm. uh the other um, thing is oh right blah, blah. out of all of the players you have to have at least one okay yeah um and we're basically sacrificing those uh words unless yeah. uh, Zap zappy basically decides which one gets to be saved and given to someone okay um uh once the spell is cast so I have, let's see, how do I show it to the rescue people? You can put it down on the, like, on the play mat. Yeah. So I have Kefris, and I have decided that Kefris means theft or thievery. So uh, perhaps we could steal from the earth. Okay. <laughs> Um, so the word I have is Ezer, which I decided means expulse. I'm not looking this up on Google at the moment. To expel or drive out. I'm like, it means obsolete? <laughs> Especially in a violent matter, but, but you know, 
Well, okay, it, it, yeah, it, it, we have to hurry. Yeah. Violently, violently expelled and alive is better than not alive. <laughs> this is true. You may end up bruised. Um. And what was what was your word, Hi? Uh, Kefris meaning theft or thievery. Because uh, yeah, I like the expel part. Because I need to be. <laughs> That's fair. Um. <laughs> so I just have to have a really good word for this. <laughs> Yeah, and then I have like thrust, which means like like driven or taken. So maybe I can use that word with expelled to mean like driven out violently. Okay, instead of using kefris. Right, so I would okay. use my word and then so Ellen's word. Drag it out. Yeah. yeah. And you can take yours back, Pi. Yep. After yeah. I finish. <laughs> okay. Might want to put it on top so it doesn't get lost. Yeah, my word is spelled T H R U Z. Peace. No, how do I put it back? Take. Uh, right click take. Why is the grid enabled? For what purpose do you keep the grid on on this? All right. Yeah, so let me so bring out my pull word. Up, pull out your word. There we go. All right, so we have our, we have chosen our words. Um... All right, so it is up to you to recite the words and describe the magic. Okay, so rolling one six-sided die for each helping word and one four-sided die for each hindering word. Um, you only have helping words because mm -hmm. we only have two words. So I get two... Two d6. Two d6. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Okay, uh, if one of the four sided dice shows a four, the spell fails, and one of the sabotaging players deciding. No, that's no, only. That's, that's only, only if you have a d4. Yeah. Oh, okay. Basically, you only matter if you oh, roll one of the max. Four sided dice. Okay. So, right. if none of them have the max roll, then the spell is weak and only partially effective. So you describe how the problem is solved, but only temporarily or partially. Before you do that, though, you have to recite the words and describe how the magic looks. Okay, so... Um, so, um, I, I say, you know, Thrazezer, and um, the ground kind of... There's like this, like, shimmering around me. Um, you can just sort of see it around in the, uh, the ground and then it's like, it goes, it sinks in and then all of a sudden, um, Zappy is like, put, you know, like, you know, being thrown out of the ground by this magic. And I think what happens is I'm driven out of the ground but the magic was so um it hurt so much that i think um like she's got major damage on her on her calves and such like like there's she's going to be she can walk but it's she's hurt she's hurt so i think that would be the consequence Okay. All right. So we have solved the problem and we use two or more words. So you get to choose 
uh, one of the words to give to one of the players. And the rest are thrown into your discard, into the whoever's uh, word it was discards. Uh, so do I get to give you your word back? You can, or you can give it to someone else. Or you can pick your pick Thruz instead and give it to any yeah, of whichever, the three of us. Whichever you think is worth keeping. That we might need again in the future. Mm -hmm. Does mean like just like thrust, like either two or back. Um, so would you like, so would Ellen want her word back or? That's up to you. You're, you're the one in control of this. Okay. I'm going to give Ellen my word and then. Okay. So I discard. Yeah, so Ezer goes into my discard. Yeah, okay. And his flip. I guess. And I get to pick this card. And you said it was, what was the meaning? Um, let me get my. It's like, um, like, um, like thrust. And like, um, basically like pushed push any direction basically that's what that's a better my words words good yeah basically means pushed <laughs> all right cool that's a better push okay okay and now i gotta put down that zappy is injured And you get to grab the location card and uh, take that into your hand. So the the marsh of the wizards. Yep. And we discard the problem. I take I I take the I don't discard it. I bring it back into my hand. Yep. So right click and take. Take card. Okay. Okay. All right, and that's the end of your turn. And that was our first turn. And uh, so it's my turn. All right, time to pick another location. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see. And as I missed the Z key so I could show chat. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Gilded Reef, a great treasure. All right, interesting. Okay, well, we're on the coast. Yeah, convenient. Um, so we're leaving the marsh behind and going along the coast, and um, we come upon an like. It's not so much an archipelago as much as it is a reef just below the water on on top of which um, a city is constructed. Now, the city is constructed by like floating islands that are secured to the reef itself and getting around is a bunch of like rowboats and and ships and everything like that. And um, I'd say the city itself is considered the great treasure because there is so much variety of creatures and uh, not just fish, but all, all kinds of different animals and life within the reef itself. And the people that live on top of the reef depend a lot on the reef's um, bounty and they are also protectors of the reef itself um mostly living off of just either protecting or cultivating like kelp beds and farming oysters and other um shellfish and stuff like that to clarify is the reef actually made of gold no 
but it can seem to when the sun hits it right. Awesome. All right. Uh, dearest Ellen, th this sounds like a very pretty place to be. What's the problem? <laughs> Let's see what the problem is. Oh, good. Oh, no. <laughs> Decaying reality. Um, the last spell is repeated. If the spell fails, all words are lost. Oh, <laughs> okay. That doesn't... <laughs> well, that's easy. There were only two, so... Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Oop. I have a grand idea that can maybe save our asses. Well, okay. put the card back down then. All right, so we have. Hold on. Let me get the card. Decaying reality in this. And I need to come up with something that will possibly have the spell actually help. And not hinder. <laughs> so, um, you know that storm we had uh, uh -huh. mentioned earlier? It brought something into the reef. And it is not a good thing. It is a thing of putrefaction. And it is killing the reef. So... What we need to do is get rid of this thing so that it does not, you know, keep consuming this gilded reef that this whole population depends on. Okay, I actually... I mean, it says the last spell is repeated. I don't know if we can add things to that on top of what's already been done. But if we can, I have something... That is basically perfect. It says the last spell is repeated. I don't think we can add to it. Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, shit. <laughs> F. Especially Have fun. fun. <laughs> so wait, uh, D6, it doesn't say anything about rolling a one, right? Thankfully okay. for no. us, no. Great. All right, well, let's see if we can push and expulse this thing out of the water and hope and uh, get Back rid of it. from whence it came. Yep. To D6, not to S6. That was a four and a two. So... Partial success? Partial success. Oh, fuck. So describe okay. the... Yeah, the so through the user, and we concentrate trying to repeat the the thing we just did to save Zappy, and including the um, violent uh, bit of the spell, because, you know, this is a bad thing. We need to damage it so that it can't just, you know, come back. And... Um, so the magic kind of happens below this thing and shoots upwards and tosses it into the sky, um, hurting it. But it uh, doesn't quite have the power to completely uh, push it far away. So it... Uh, lands on the like beach area it is weakened it cannot move so it cannot consume but it's still there and will need to be dealt with or contained so that it can't get back to the reef at least it didn't fail yeah <laughs> So now you need to figure out which spell card we're going to keep and which one we discard. Um, well, given how things are, I'm going to give Ezer to 
uh, Zappy. And we will discard uh, the push card. So Ezer, meaning expulse, goes to you. Michelle? And you add that to your list, Michelle. Oh, okay. And then you pick up the card. Excellent. All right, and I get to keep my Gilded Reef. And nope, I don't want to take the problem card. Oh, wait. <laughs> You're no fun. All right, and now it is Pi's turn. All right. Oh, God, I have to sneeze. And maybe this time we'll get to use more than two words, the same ones at that. Don't worry, I'm still missing the Z button. So we have for our location a Diamond River, a disagreement. All right, I think we've had enough of the coast. So we're gonna go inland for a bit while this thing recovers and perhaps the city will not blame us for, for whatever troubles befall them in the future. So we go inland for a bit and uh, we, we need to restock on our water supplies and we come to a crystal clear, beautifully flowing river. And, uh, Let's see here. Blah blah blah. Place to be. And while it is wonderful so that we can refill our, our canteens and such, there are two families on each side one on each side of the river there, and uh they seem to be loudly discussing something not really sure which sure what it's about but they are very animated and uh let's see here how how large do you think these gatherings are uh fossil it's not that much larger than our group maybe five or six people at most okay so it's not like half of a city on one side and the other half on the other okay sounds good and uh is there anything else in the river uh michelle other than you know the regular rocks and fishes and such i think one group believes there's perhaps something valuable in the river and the other group is just like it doesn't even if it might be valuable there's not enough and it would disrupt the river too much and it shouldn't be taken out okay so one side is saying it's mine it's mine we found it first and the other is uh trying to stop them or yeah, at least they... saying you know it's the rivers it's not ours so we're just going to leave it alone right let's see how, how this becomes even more of a problem shall we of course doom fading wards one of the words must be restorative or protective I got you, fam. All right, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> so as they're they're shouting over this river and the possible uh, valuable things that are in it, when we get closer, we can tell that the one side has been protecting the the valuable things in the river. They used to be uh, artifacts, and they've hidden them from view with, um, with spells. And only spells can restore the invisibility or move them to a safer location. And uh, we've seen what can happen when things suddenly show up and try and destroy uh, 
than nature. So we, we need to fix the missing wards by either getting them away from the uh, party that is searching or we have to hide them so that they cannot be found. How the hell we do that? Um... <laughs> so... <laughs> I have a word. Yeah. Tis. It means original. Or originality, but I I feel like the the former is slightly more useful here. So I'm thinking we restore the wards to their original fully functional state, and then we're good, right? Yeah, except yeah, for I mean... uh, if, if no one else shows up with a. That, that's a helping word, yes. I have a word. Alright. Um, I, I say Lee. Um, this means hidden. <laughs> Alright. Karu, are you gonna add anything? Uh, I could add a very powerful word, but, uh... Because I have one that literally means power. Um... <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but, um... I have a better idea. Oh no. Oh no. So, scintilla means bind. So we can use that to bind the spell of the wards to, like, m keep it from unraveling. Okay. Um, I'm gonna make things interesting. And, uh, one piece of feedback is I would make each problem, like, if you have multiple spell words, one of them has to be different from the others in terms of like you can't all have them be helpful or hindering though I think the more we play the more chances we have of hindering yeah. so uh remember when I said most of mine weren't super helpful mm -hmm. uh huh so uh I'm gonna get rid of Yaren oh gosh I can't select it because I have text tool selected and uh eh. and we can watch me struggle on live on Twitch. <laughs> and it means either pest or devil. And this isn't going to be helpful. This is going to be uh, a hindrance because it can distract either the person if you're not powerful enough it can distract the person that is casting the spell or it will add its power um to not to help but uh to change the spell in some way that it sees fit not necessarily the caster's intent I can only assume your car your your uh, caster meant well with adding like the spell word. It was like it, it's a defender. It will defend yeah. the the bo the ward. Because you know these people might come back with their own casters and and try and find what we what we got rid uh -huh. of. Uh huh. Best of intentions. Uh huh. Uh -huh. All right. So one thing we have to do properly is describe how the like spell. cast the spell and before then we roll. roll. So, why don't you cast the spell and tell us how it looks? Alright, uh, so... Hobbesian smugly goes over. Since the, he is, uh, 
naturally and studied, this will be piece of cake. Uh, Tisli Scintilla Yarun. And with each wave of his hand, there are threads that come off of uh, his fingertips. Threads that weave themselves into a net. This must be what the original spell looked like um, in terms of uh, a cloth that hides things from view. And as these strands come together, they fall over the artifacts and start winding around them. And uh, an aquatic scorpion appears towards the end to grab the um, frayed ends of the net. So uh, we'll, we'll see how well this goes. <laughs> Roll three. First D4 then. Yep. yep. All right, so we hope I don't get a four on the D4, but I get a six on a D6. Well, well, I've none rolled none of the above. I've rolled three yeah. d six plus d four, and I got a sum of six. <laughs> <laughs> Karu, what did you do to me? <laughs> That's what you get for adding a d four. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, all right. So, it didn't fail, is what I've learned. <laughs> but uh, instead of the, the scorpion just crawling under the rocks and dodging things it um decided to hunt some of the wildlife in the river and now the net is much wider and larger than it was intended to be so you can see that some of it is uh, a little thinner in places and this spell is not going to last probably as long as it should because um, there are there are weaknesses in it mm -hmm. and will need to be replaced or strengthened in the future so let's see here now I need to pick a spell to keep don't I All right, I think I'm going to keep Centilia or Bind, which means the rest of you can just fuck off. <laughs> and who are we going to give Bind to? Uh... Ellen, you are sad and only have four words. <laughs> so you may have Centilia. Okay. And I am going to take our Diamond River. Foff. All right. Let's see where we're going. Plains of Primor. That's a that is a name right there. Drag it out to the uh. The... Oh God. Sorry. The Plains of Primordium and the uh. The prompt is. Truth and illusion. Oh boy. All right. What does this place look like? <laughs> so, we we followed the the river out for. Uh, a day or two's worth of travel. And the the river at some point just kind of stops flowing. And then as we keep going, it starts flowing the opposite direction. And we eventually follow the river to 
a a waterfall into this large basin. Think like Grand Canyon size. And at the bottom of the basin lies four distinct areas, each representing one of the classical four elements. The the river that we've been following dumps into the water quadrant. The clockwise from that we get uh, an air quadrant, which is filled with smoke and fog. Clockwise to that we get uh, a a smaller mountainous region. I, I'm saying mountainous in quotes. doesn't actually reach up to where we are standing at the top of this basin. Uh, where the the red hot glow of of lava kind of seeps into the surrounding areas a tiny bit and then to f- flesh out the last quadrant there's uh, a a rocky plains and as we make our way down into the water quadrants we run into a problem that's how a... did you get the most ominous cards in this whole game <laughs> <laughs> I just so trouble these also this is so perfect for the location what the fuck <laughs> so right. Our, our problem is the ancient one will soon pass. <laughs> could you could you describe this more, Fossil? <laughs> well, I know I'm allowed to ask you three for uh-huh. help in describing the location. I'm going to take a little bit of liberty and help you, f- or ask you for help in describing the problem so michelle which quadrant is this ancient one from what element do they represent they represent wind all right ellen what has befallen the wind in in this basin? What threatens the Ancient One's existence? It's expended its powers and it's dying. And Hobbesian What does the Ancient One want to happen? Other than, you know, not dying. (laughs) Not die, yes. (laughs) That's that's kind of a given. So, the Ancient One has power over their element, and if they were to die, there would be a terrible storm and it would start out as a tornado but instead of dying over time as it travels it would grow as it encountered other elements and the ancient one would like this not to happen because then their the memory of people would remember the the ancient wind as a a vicious being and not one that helped the earth. All right. So we have uh, a being of wind that's 
spent its power trying to to control and contain wind without it all of this is going to just start spreading throughout the land leaving a trail of devastation that continually grows and grows until yeah the stakes are are small you know <laughs> not there's not much riding on this only the fate of the entire world we got this Listen, right? it would it would stop running into new elements at some point, so it would just be really big, and then it would be somebody else's problem if we fail. <laughs> well, let's see what we can do about this. Oh boy! <laughs> All right, I have I have the perfect spell for this, or at least Ellen thinks it's the perfect spell. I think this is going to be a D four card. Uh, <laughs> so I'm putting forth Hecato. <laughs> what could go wrong? Which means storm. Oh! <laughs> oh, great! Great! Yeah! <laughs> this will stop them oh, from dying. No. no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> yeah! It's a, it, I'm like, wind um ancient one has to restore his power so what we need is to like inject storm in him and this will go great <laughs> <laughs> so, probably not but you know uh, oh no i have hin law which means like to bind or to tie so Zappy's thinking, well, if we have a storm and we need to attach it to this ancient one, then we need to, you know, bind it to the ancient one. All right. All right. I can I can get behind that. Um I will also put forth a word of my own. Um, <laughs> Alka means like constituent components or like basic elements. Uh, I guess if we're trying to put it into one word, fundamentals. And, uh, I'm thinking that if we place the basic element of a storm, right? The basic element of a storm is going to be the wind, and that should provide, you know, some of that, that control, some of that power back into this this whole deal all right so uh i can't fix that all right cool i was gonna say so apparently you should put the card down before you start typing uh i'm gonna add drawer which is unholy or unearthly glee. And, uh, if I'm gonna roll a 1d2, and if this turns out to be a 1, this is not gonna help. Oh, thank goodness. So this is going <laughs> hey. to be helpful by basically elevating the energy of the spell and making it positive. All right. So before you roll, I... uh, cast and describe. So change the order of the words if you need to. I I think it. Or if I can. think we can we can just run with this order. Cool. Hikato Hinla, Alka Juror, and 
a a small storm begins to to appear around the ancient one's fading body um Things could have gone worse. <laughs> and by grabbing out the the bits of of the storm that are most attached to this ancient being and binding them together, we're able to to inject some of that that power that we all have come across in our journeys back into the ancient one. It's definitely not a permanent solution, but you know, we'll we'll at least have a a couple of years without some mega storm completely ruining us. We have we have time to come up with a more permanent solution, at least. All right. As for as for who gets to to keep a spell or a word, rather. Um. I really like the concept of drawer. Um, and also, I'm really interested to see how Ellen would use that. So, Ellen, you may have drawer. Okay. The rest of us <laughs> will. <laughs> Ellen seems so pleased. <laughs> <laughs> And thank goodness for the strike through function. Or I'd have to like delete and keep typing. So it's about uh eleven thirty six in Eastern Land. And I don't remember if the next one was supposed to start in half an hour or an hour and a half. It's at ten o'clock, so we have So half an hour ish. Yeah. So um, do we want to read through what happens at the end? Um... Because I don't know how long, like, wrap-up takes. Yeah. So, uh, I think you were up next reading. I regret! <laughs> <laughs> Speechless. After the last words are used to cast a spell, no more cards are drawn. Each player takes an additional turn to share what they've learned about magic over the course of their journey. Then in reverse order, play the location cards you've obtained and describe what you see as you take your path home. When you arrive at home, sit in silence. Maintaining so, write a phrase in your handout that begins with, my words are, and indicate how your words have changed throughout the game. I think given uh, we have 20 minutes, we might as well just pretend we don't have any more words and start our journey home. Also, I don't know how you would have no words remaining. I mean, I guess since you're only keeping one and discarding multiples. Yeah, you would you end then up... But wouldn't you end up with one person having a word at the end and no one else having any? But then they use that word. So basically, the last spell. That's where the the D four comes in, because the less words you have as a group, the more chances that the words you have are going to oh, be are not bigger. helpful to the thing that you're trying yeah. to do. So your journey starts really nice, and like you can you have you can spells, fix everything. You can fix everything. But the more you use your magic, the less words you have, and the that more apply. Yeah, and you start yeah. running out of options, and that's where the D4s start to show up. 
Okay. So ideally, as the game pr progresses, things get harder to to do properly, and that's where <laughs> things start to unravel. And I think that would also make it more interesting in terms of what did you learn about magic, and you know, either conservation of your magic or how to use yeah. it. Yeah. Not just for its obvious purpose, I guess. Yeah, because at the beginning everything's easy, and it's like, yeah, I used your magic, and I just your magic the easy one, and and it works. And while it may not be perfect, at least it did good and never came to harm. Um, maybe we, I guess, if you wanted to play a shorter game, you could like use draw less cards, fewer. Um, I feel like for a shorter game, you wouldn't necessarily have a... It would just be the one person draw a location and describe it. Don't add the others because I suppose that would add time if you were trying to like cut down on time. Yeah, we did kind of make this a long form thing by adding RP into literally every step of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for like creation, but but I think that's how it's supposed to be. Like yeah. you're supposed to explain the situation and explain the thing. I think we're doing it right. It's just longer. It's just supposed to be for like oh, like maybe every you know Thursday this would be a thing, and then eventually we would run out of words. I think what hurt was that the first turn was two words, and then the next <laughs> oh, yes. turn was re is you repeat the, same the two, two words. words absolutely, and yes. because of that. I, I think um, that would have been six cards that probably might have been discarded. Right. And then, right. Yeah. you know, maybe someone would have only had two at this point. Right. Yeah, the repeated spell, if it were four, would be fine, but we just or happened terrible. to get the two-word one before... Or even if it was a repeated spell by the time we got to the end, where maybe they wouldn't all have been helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, like, as a longer term, not campaign, but I guess exercise mm -hmm. would be pretty good. But, yeah, I uh, feel like six words can go a bit longer, but Michelle is absolutely right. And also, like, it depends. Because oh, yeah. if you think of, like, a normal RPG session would take, like, three to four hours, we only had two and, two and a half, half, two hours, really, to play the game. So, like, I, I don't think we have that many like if we went for another round That's we true. would probably get rid of all the cards because we have four cards left approximately per person um, yeah. yes we also points. had to set up and like learn the game as well so yeah yes. learning so. <laughs> I think as a way to build a world like if oh, you're yeah. doing a home a homebrew and you're like I am stuck on the on a uh, world or even a city yeah like the city that we came I'm just like hey we live in the mountains in a tiered like, city and by shit. the end and by the end we had this culture and busy and we were busy in different sections I mean and then like, like we there's different subcultures to our city where you know, maybe if you lived at the very top, you are rich because you can just afford to buy everything to get up there versus, you know, at the very bottom of the mountain where you have to work for everything because you have to send it up the mountain mm -hmm. or something. There's actually, I know that, I can't remember what it's called, but I know there's another itch game like this that is actually just about that. World building about via... a society and, and even a map to go with your world there wow. there i can't remember what it is but yeah it is basically that it is that intro from this one but extended into a game where you actually flesh out the place and its details i like this kind of game for that because it's like yeah it's improv heavy and at the beginning it's slow because everyone's trying to like warm up their creative engine <laughs> and figure out <laughs> what the end. hell you're doing yeah but by the end you're grabbing a card and being like okay this is this and just blah like, I like the, the whole, like, yeah, I got a gilded reef and I made up this whole city and, like, fleshing out the world with each location and what this world looks like. And it might start time. out idyllic and then 
there's always something that goes wrong. Because imagine playing this through to the end, and you have all these different locations fleshed out already with built-in problems, and then you have, like, the follow-up, you know, adventure of a bunch of characters who have to are traveling through this world that some people, you know, kind of, sort of messed up or, like, left things precariously down. Yes. Like, yeah. uh, hey, Karu, um, since you're the GM, try dealing out one or two location cards to each person to simulate, like, if we had done X number of rounds. Okay. Yeah, because um, imagine, like, we could have spent you, you have that problem at, like, the marsh thing, and it's like, okay, that's your D&D &D session for whatever, and then you're yeah. like, well, where do we go next? And you pick up, and then we would have gone to the city. It's like, this is, like, a really cool way to have... You know, maybe they were trading with the marsh city, and suddenly they just disappeared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, like, so, if now that we have two location cards, what you're supposed to do at the end is... You play said location cards and describe what you're seeing as you take the path home. So each person's path home would be different. Is it? I thought it was just in the order that we played them. When you're, uh... You go... Uh... You go in reverse order playing your location card so we would have start back with like but since you get them in order in terms of like one two three four yeah. circle back now it's going like eight four uh seven three so you're getting it kind of out of order as you're going back hmm. yeah i read it as like you're traveling back home and this is what you see of the locations that you've passed through ah because it yeah. says they're describing what you see as you take the path home. So you're you're going through each of the locations and describing like how it has changed after the effects of the spell. Like how uh, shout out to the location I got dealt, which is called Oblivion. That which was lost. <laughs> Amazing. I got Bay Isles Dreams of Another Journey. Ooh. Ooh. I got Tomb of Layla Glass, Tradition and Ceremony. Wow. Foth okay, so Foth, you could have gotten one worse. You could have gotten Oblivion, too. <laughs> Wait, I'll, I'll give the problems for each location. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, what, what, what a merciful GM. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Gee, thanks. What did uh what did you get, Fawful, for the second location? Uh so I got Ithra Zaya, what lies within the ruins. And our problem was Ooh. how few remain. Which oh, is no. again Oh no What is it with like super <laughs> thematic problems for the location? You're like, okay, ruins. Uh, <laughs> I think they built it in a way that each one can be thematic for location. Because I got, yeah. uh, for the tomb, I got an age-old wound. <laughs> it's okay. For yeah. Oblivion, I got a prophecy fulfilled. Oh, boy! <laughs> and then for the Fey Isles, which is dreams of another journey... Come back up. Come on. I got the crystal of Ozer Kai has broken. <laughs> oh, that sounds wow. magical as hell. I yeah. feel like the the location, like just using the location and problem deck, you could absolutely make a oh full session for any game. You could make an entire campaign. Yeah, yeah. Like any one of these like location and, and problem decks could be used for like. Oh, I don't have anything to throw at my players. Hold on. I need a filler episode. <laughs> yeah, I like yep. that. Karu, I think you're going to need to add, like, a lot of the people on Midgar Midgardia to the game as GM so we can just <laughs> use this randomly. <laughs> I definitely like it also as, like, the, the spoken magic part of the game. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I kind of, yeah, I definitely want to see what happens as you start running out of magic words to use and as have to start, start hindering. 
Um, because... Um, oh, yeah. Um, so the words that I had left were telepathy, angel, theft or thievery, and loss of a blessing or a boon. <laughs> my God. No money you say that. My last word is blessings. <laughs> Maybe. Huh. I will point out, if we had continued playing, Fawfuls would have been the last one to play. Oh no! <laughs> and I uh, feel like you would have still had that word by. <laughs> Probably! Because I would have been like, no, this is terrible. We don't want this. Yep. I, I had summon, uh, frozen, which, you know, could have been interpreted as such frozen in time or, or ice. Okay. Um, let's see. Use push and hidden, expel. And then I had blinding. Ooh. Nice. Those all seem pretty useful. That would have been interesting for the the crystal, in the, hmm. the fae. Yeah. yeah. So I had left water, sleep, power. Eh. I still had bind, and the unholy, unearthly glee. I I do like that two of you came up with bind. Yep. Yeah, seems like yeah. uh, we were thinking of the same uh, utility kind of thing. You know why I was gleeful when I grabbed the Unearthly Glee? Why? Because uh, I was just imagining it uh, turning the cat back into a beholder. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so if it turned out to be like a failure, this is what would happen. <laughs> No, if you look at that card, I think it's the third, no, it's the fourth image. It definitely look like, looks like a person, topless, with a skirt, with its arms in the air. You know, I looked at it, and the first thing I saw was a, an angry face. <laughs> like, with the, cur the curly curl that you see as a as a head, I see it more as a, like, uh, like hair, and then the hands that you saw are the, um... I'm just gonna. I I saw yeah I saw the like, it's a face, it's two eyes, not. <laughs> it's no, an angry. I, I, I can see that. <laughs> but no, just I just saw someone face. in a hula hoop, hula <laughs> skirt yeah. like dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if you want to see someone dancing, you should have seen my bind card in the exact same position. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, if I had no idea, I just went by the symbols, and I'm like, what does this look like? And then the first thing I came up with, and then I'd just go with that. <laughs> Alright, so we have seven minutes <sighs> left, and... Two of us need to get prepped for the next game, so I Wait, think what? we need to call it. Aren't you in? No. Oh god, I'm in the next one. Why didn't I volunteer to stay <laughs> until three a.m.? <laughs> I'm so smart. Oh, it means and... we don't have to leave this channel. We can just chill here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Garmin, um... Garmin, Karu totally don't have the power to make me leave this channel. <laughs> um. No. But thank okay, you so we... much, Michelle and uh, Foff, for joining us. Yeah. And uh, going with the flow since uh, the Rona. Um, Ikaru, um, she... I don't think we said where we got where you got this game. Oh, uh, so initially I found Spoken Magic as one of the Itch Eo bundle, the the huge. Uh, the one. The Rachel just the one that bundle. The one everyone knows about. Um, and I had, when when it was still only 750 games, I actually went Ooh. through and w looked at each ev and every game and downloaded a bunch that seemed interesting. Yes, I did. Um, so I had a like folder full of the ones that I had found interesting and downloaded, which included Spoken Magic. So I was looking for something for this. And then I'm like, okay, but all of these are like, eh, we don't have cams, so maybe find something on... And I went on Roll20... And it turns out you can buy Spoken Magic on Roll20 fully programmed with all the cards. So I was like, I 
was already looking at this one. <laughs> I had it open on the PDF side. So yeah, you can actually buy this on Roll20 and it has all that you've seen here with everything set up for you to go and play the game immediately. So that's cool. Or you can get it from Itch.io as a PDF and it comes with all the cards to print out and use at your table. Nice. So it's like one of those that actually works in person just as well um, as it would. Before we go, yeah, should we maybe drop our our words and their definitions in chat for people who who are trying to follow along and like who are watching? Sure. And all that. Go for it. Um, like a Twitch chat or the Roll Twenty chat? Uh, either. Uh, it's probably going to be know. either I mean, in yeah. Twitch I'll because that it'll be a you. larger. <laughs> Um, yeah, we can, we can actually, um, I can show to players, wait, we can all see each other's things anyways. So Pi, you could open each of the, um, character sheets so that people could see that. We could also just, I can, we can grab them all and put them on a list, like a master list of all the words with their meanings if anyone wants to decide to use those as actual words for their magic. Um, should they want to for their campaign or whatever. All right. Um, while Pi is doing that, I am going to start the next giveaway once I figure out which one it is. <laughs> I was muted. The next giveaway is, uh, I believe, Spaceship and Star Worms PDF pack and a set of ice cream dice. We'll see if uh, Kara comes up with the same thing. Yep. All right, it is started, and everyone can enter if you want. Wait, some... wait, do we ban it? Ba Bazian? Kaz is banned from joining <laughs> this one. I love you, Kazian. You must suffer with the uh, rest of us who cannot join and not win anything at all. Um, despite the fact that we want to. So despite the fact that we very much want to. Um, oh my goodness. Let so yeah, if you want yummy looking dice that you are forbidden from eating and uh, PDFs to play spaceships and star worms and throw star worms at your party, uh, <laughs> join the giveaway. It does also include the Natural Environments books, which is their version of the Monster Manual. So these are 5th edition compatible. So you can absolutely throw alien monsters into any campaign, not just the space uh, sci-fi setting. And I'm sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are some wonderful images in that uh, book. I, I've seen a couple that they posted when they were first um, releasing it. So it looks like a good resource, even if you aren't playing sci-fi. Oh no, and Grace is in Quebec. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Well, I heard that apparently Quebec is looking to loosen up their giveaway laws so that they aren't screwed over yeah. by the rest of the world. For the record, we don't just hate on Quebec, even though they don't speak real French. Um, it's that they have really strange rules about giveaways, and I believe that TL TLDR is that the customer is always right. So if someone from Quebec says, it's, hey, I want that, that, 
it's not just that. Not, Quebec wait, wait. actually has not uh, just that. No, no, no. Quebec. The main problem is not that customers always right. The problem is their giveaway laws require you to register thirty days in advance with the government of Quebec. Um, huh. Pay a fee to the government equal to the value of the prize you're giving out, which is a refundable deposit, basically, so that you guarantee that that like the government guarantees that the person will get the prize, or at least the money va monetary mm. value, and they keep a ten percent of that as a uh, fee. That's nuts! No wonder no one friggin yeah. Uh huh. Oh, and oh, apparently oh. you can't register if the value is really low. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I think the, the register value is like $2,000 and up. Um, wow. There's, there's more complications, of course. Like, but that's kind of like, there's also like the rules have to be in French unless everything in the giveaway is in English, in which case you're fine. But like, there's a lot of like. Other I get with the U.S. where a lot of the giveaways are only the continental U.S. because shipping to Hawaii and Alaska is ridiculous, mm -hmm. and like that's just like they want to not make it, you know, five times as expensive as someone from there wins. Yeah, but Nebraska is also exempt from a lot of giveaways in the ah! U.S. <laughs> Hi, Garm. Hello. Yeah, I'm a stranger. I'm Either sure fun. they also have exceptions for like charity giveaways. Like even Canada has different laws for charity giveaways with respect to other stuff too. Oh, apparently if the total value is under a hundred CAD, you don't have to register it. Yeah. 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 I, I didn't read the whole thing because like when I was looking it up just out oh, of Oh, you looked at part of it and went, no. It, it was a long no. read. <laughs> Um, so I just got like the highlights either way that is why pretty much every single giveaway you see online says offer not valid in Quebec because well, I can I can promise you all of the giveaways I find are just only valid in the continental US because I'm stuck in America <laughs> don't worry most of the ones I find are also only valid in the continental US <laughs> at least I can enter the ones that say that A lot yeah. of them, I, I feel like a lot of the ones that say that is just because they want to not bother with shipping things off the continental shelf oh, or out of the country. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. yeah. Shout out to the uh, flat rate things to ship to Canada, which are like $25 for the small one and $50 for the medium one. <laughs> yeah. Not that I've ever done that. <laughs> but you yeah. don't spend that so much in Canada because it's actually cheaper to ship outside Canada. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's somebody else's problem now. I don't know why it's so fucking expensive to ship things inside Canada. Canada, what the fuck? It's big. So is the world! Nah! <laughs> big no, it's and low only density. Canada. Big and low density is the, the two things. Yeah, and you have to deal with weather. Look, like, 70% of the world is water. I think that's pretty low density. <laughs> I... You're, you're less wrong than you should be. <laughs> I'm mad about it. Alright, we have talked so much that it is already 10 o'clock. Um, and we have another game starting at 10 o'clock. So, like, four minutes ago. Wait, um, I'm streaming? No, apparently Garm solved that issue by streaming himself. Yeah, I can do it. Since he already has it set up. Um, so we will be right back, I guess, because I do need a break. <laughs> no, you don't. No break for you. Oh, wait, I'm streaming. It's... I have to end it. Yeah, you do. I'm so smart. All right. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back. <laughs> Oh wait, that just stopped the recording. No one saw that! <laughs>